Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Ben, and this is the Top 10 Star Trek Tag Original Series Edition. So this tag was created by Steve Donahue, uh, one of my co-hosts for Book Trek 2023, where for three months, June, July, and August, we are reading and celebrating and talking about uh, Star Trek fiction, uh, really geeking out here. Um, and he created this tag uh, as, of course, a part of that. Um, he is a huge fan of the original series, and he has basically taken his top 10 episodes of the original series and used them to um, create a tag. Uh, so his tags are of the nosy kind. Uh, so we will, <laughs> well, let's, let's begin here. Um, his 10th, this, is, this goes from 10 to 1, uh, this is a countdown list. Um, his number 10 uh, favorite Star Trek episode is Requ Requiem for Methuselah by Jerome Bixby. And his question is, would you live forever if you could? And that is about somebody who is essentially immortal um, in that episode. Um, and I would say live forever, uh, not forever if it meant that I might someday be like a sentient head laying in a post-apocalyptic wasteland alone uh, <laughs> on a dying world. Um, not that kind of forever, no. I would love to be able to extend my life uh, until I didn't. Um, basically live for as long as I wanted to. Um, that's what I would like. And if we mean live forever as like, I can remain healthy and young and not just continually grow old and decrepit, you know, <laughs> have gravity work on me for 300 years. Um, no, but I would love to be able to essentially be immortal, be young, maybe, uh, be more fit than I am now <laughs> and essentially live until I decided I wanted to die. I think that would be the ideal. Uh, and that could be in 100 years, 200 years, 1,000 years, I don't know. But whenever I decided, that's when I would go. His ninth favorite episode is Balance of Terror, a great episode that introduces us to the Romulans uh, by Paul Schneider. What are some of your favorite novels about unlikely friendships? Have you ever had one yourself? Uh, to answer that first, or that second question first, I don't know if I've had unlikely friendships. I don't think so. Uh, most of my friends, all my friends really, especially the close ones, have all, we've all had a lot of stuff in common. I don't think any of my friendships have really been unlikely. Um, we certainly don't always see eye to eye on everything, but we're always very respectful of each other and, you know, um, we all fit pretty well. Uh, now, for novels. Now, I am not somebody who reads a lot of fiction. And I looked through my bookshelves in fiction and I was having a hard time finding examples. Uh, I mean, I thought like, you know, Frodo and Samwise or something, or uh, Gimli and, you know, Legolas from, you know, Lord of the Rings. Um, but that was a pretty boring answer. <laughs> uh, and I still have another boring answer, but um, this is the other one that I came up with on my shelves. And that's Of Mice and Men, John Steinbeck, uh, George and Lenny. George is man of average size and uh, he's quick-witted, he's really intelligent, he's not super educated, but he's very intelligent, and he is best friends with Lenny, uh, somebody who is very large and hulking, but is very slow uh, mentally, he's not very bright. Um, and George is something of a protector for Lenny. But, uh, you know, it, it, I would say that, you know, they're childhood friends, I think, in the book, but their friendship overall, I think, would be unlikely. Uh, you have this, you know, fairly young, virile uh, George, who is palling around with this, um, you know, uh, the Lenny, um, who comes with a lot of baggage um, and uh, definitely makes life more difficult for George. Um, and I, I, this is one of the first books that I ever read cover to cover at, in a single sitting. And I did that in middle school. So this is always a book that had a special place in my heart. Uh, but so much of this book is about loneliness. Um, so, you know, George and Lenny kind of finding each other and being best friends, I, I always liked and connected with that. So that'll be my answer for that one. Uh, his eighth favorite is The Naked Time by John Black. Uh, and that's when the uh, the crew, um, has, they get exposed to a disease that makes them completely uninhib uninhibited. And uh, they basically act out all their wildest fantasies. Um, that's when where Sulu is going around without a shirt, um, trying to 
challenge people to duels with his uh with his rapier um and he says what would an uninhibited you be like uh i mean if you're around me when i'm drunk um i don't think i'm super different i mean yeah there's some differences uh i'd say that i'm more uh my humor might get cruder <laughs> I'm, I'm a big fan of crude humor uh and i think i get more like affectionate and sentimental um that's the kind of thing that that happens with me uh, i get very sentimental especially when it comes to things like my kids um you know i love my kids but if you get me drinking and i start thinking about my kids uh i can get emotional about it um i don't usually show it that much but i feel it uh so an un uninhibited me might be crude but also affectionate that might not be a great combination. Um, seven, Tomorrow is Yesterday by DC Fontana. He says, a fun episode. What are some of your favorite sorts of bookish fun? What's your current go-to for non-bookish fun? Um, so bookish fun, of course, I make booktube videos. Uh, I love shopping for books. Uh, reading, I guess, is bookish fun. I like talking books on booktube and Voxer and Discord. Uh... And I would like to get more back into writing. Um, I still do it here and there, but I'd like to make it a more continuous thing. Um, so I guess that would be bookish fun. Uh, Non-bookish non fun. Um, these days, you can see me. Uh, I'm still uh, watching horror films and discussing them on my podcast, The Horrorcast. Uh, like hanging out with my kids, hanging out with friends. Uh, sometimes we have friends over to have some drinks and play board games. Um, that's a good time. I like nature walks. I I hesitate to call them hikes because <laughs> I'm not trying to scale huge mountains or you know risk breaking my ankle on boulders. Um, it's more I like being out in nature. Um, so that's another you know non-bookish fun that I have. Uh, and I'd like to of course get back into traveling um, once we get a little more income to afford that. And we're already trying to plan and work on that. And uh, I would like to get back into using swords more. Um, and by that I mean like cut testing and you know looking into HEMA more historical European martial arts and also traditional archery which I want to set up outside once we're next thing we have to do is set up a above ground pool on our yard um, but on the other side of the yard I'll finally have time to do some archery uh, number six or his sixth favorite is The Trouble with Tribbles by David Gerald another fun classic he says uh, Tribbles are basically born pregnant what's your relationship to the birds and the bees do you have kids? If so, how much? And in what ways do they hate you? And if not, why not? I do have kids, yes. I have a son and a daughter. My son is about to turn 11. My daughter is 7. And they don't usually hate me, um, although there are certainly moments when we don't see eye to eye. And times when I get frustrated when I've said the same thing, you know, a dozen times and I still see them doing it, uh, even though I told them not to. Uh, so, yeah, it's not always a perfect relationship, I guess. Um... But, you know, a lot of time and effort is certainly spent uh, trying to train them not to leave messes around the house and clean them back for themselves. Um, but no, I don't think they hate me. I think they, they still like me quite a bit. And um, lately we've been, with my kids, we've been uh, watching the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. My kids are gotten really into superheroes and comic books, so that's what we've been doing lately. Uh, number five, The Galileo Seven by Oliver Crawford. Uh, he says, what's the most desperate, long-odds gamble you've ever taken? Um, <clears throat> I mean, a lot of my life ultimately is a gamble, I think. Uh, getting married, having kids, buying a house, uh, going into a teaching career. Um, these are all things that could definitely have backfired. <laughs> and they're all things that have, you know, permanently altered my life. Uh, so I, I'd say all those things are long-odds gambles. Um, you know, I didn't do any of them blindly. Uh, yeah, I, I took my time, I was careful, and I researched, but uh, I could have always taken other paths. So I know that that's kind of, I guess, where I'm going to go with that. Um, I'm sure there are other instances in my life that I just can't think of right now. Number four, A Muck Time by Theodore Sturgeon. An episode that ends with a knockdown fight. Do you have any experience in unarmed combat? Ever been in a fight as an adult? Uh, I have not been in a fight as an adult. Um, in As a teenager, I did like junior varsity wrestling. Um, I wasn't great at it. I mean, I was okay. I was naturally strong, but I didn't have a lot of skills with that. 
Um, I got into some minor physical altercations with, uh, with some people back in, um, back in high school. Uh, I remember one, I had this, um, I was in Spanish class and I think I was a sophomore and the kid was a junior and he was like a foot taller than me at least. He was, he was at least, he was over six feet tall, uh, much taller than me, but he was lanky. Um, but because of his size difference, he would, he decided that, uh, he and some other people who were in my grade were going to try and single me out. And uh, he was like, Vince, Vince, I'm going to kick your, you know what, you know, after school. And he happened to live in the same condominium complex as me. So he always took the bus home with me. And there was one day he got off the bus. And I think he was like half joking. You know, I don't, I don't think he was committed to actually uh, trying to do physical harm to me. But I think he was just having fun, you know, seeing how far he could push it. And um, I had this other... Uh, there's another guy with us, and um, he was on the wrestling team with me. And he had said to the guy's name was Greg, the tall guy that was messing with me. He had said, "Dude, you don't you don't want to mess with him." He's like, "You know, I'm telling you right now, you don't." Um, unfortunately, that guy that had my back, he killed himself uh, as an adult, which sad story in itself. But he had my back that day, and uh, he said, "I'm warning you." He's like, "You're not going to want to." So Greg wanted to, you know, have like a kind of a sparring session, of fisticuffs with me, and. Um, he was, he kind of had his hands up to, to punch. And I remember because actually I was smaller than him, I was able to get under him and I actually grabbed his, uh, grabbed his elbows and I pushed them together and then I picked him up and I was able to throw him on the hood of a car that was next to us. And, uh, at that point he got off the ground and he became like my spokesperson. He was like, he was thrilled that I was able to throw him and... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, he, I, I, he just didn't see it coming at all. And the next day in school, I remember we were in Spanish class and he was telling those other kids, he's like, dude, don't mess with him. He's like, <laughs> he's like, he will kick your, you know what? Um, so those are the kinds of things. And, uh, I did actually get into a little bit more of a real fight with him that it was really one-sided. I mostly just knocked him down because, uh, we were out in the woods and he decided he saw a frog out there. And uh, he decided he was going to kick it to death with his steel toe boots for no reason at all. And I told him not to, and he did it anyway. So I ended up knocking him down. Um, but other than that, not much for uh, physical altercations. As an adult, um, you know, I don't hang out at bars. I don't go to places really where I'm going to, I'm likely to get into a fight, uh, where I'm likely to be hanging out with strangers who are going to be angry at me for some reason. Um, and I'm not somebody who's quick to lose my temper. Uh, you know, it just doesn't usually come up at all. Uh, three, This Side of Paradise by DC Fontana and Jerry Soul. More inhibitions being stripped away. Have you ever walked out of paradise? If so, do you ever regret it? And that's a great episode. One of my favorites, This Side of Paradise. Um, if we're not counting, like, a good vacation, uh, then no, I have not walked out of paradise. Um, I've certainly been on some good vacations and places I'd love to stay. Um, but, you know, of course, I, it's not a willingly walking out just because I ran out of money and I have to go home. Um, but uh, no, other than that, I don't think I've ever been in paradise and, you know, willingly walked away um, from it. So I, I can't say I have. Uh, the second favorite of his is Who Mourns for Adonis uh, by Gilbert Ralston. He says, Greek myth retellings are still all the rage. Do you have any favorites? Um, I don't think I've read any real Greek myth retellings, at least not that have stuck with me. I know that there are some that are pretty popular in the last couple of years. They're just not something that I've read. Um, I said in the past, I don't read a lot of fiction. Uh, most of my reading ends up being nonfiction. I do read some fiction, but I just don't get to that kind of stuff usually. Um, I do like cinematic retellings of... Norse myths. I love like the Ray Harryhausen um, films like Jason the Argonauts and I loved Clash of the Titans when I was growing up. Uh, the movie Troy is fun um, you know with a uh, Brad Pitt and uh, Eric Bana. Um, that's that's a fun movie uh, and um, when I was a kid I used to love the uh, Xena and Hercules series. <laughs> uh, those are retellings. It was something like Oh Brother Where Art Thou which is a retelling of the Odyssey, but in basically, uh, you know, the 1920s, is that what it is, 1920s, in American South, 
or was 1930s. I don't remember exactly. It's been a while since I've seen it. Um, but I like I like retellings in the cinema. Um, I just haven't read very many of them at all, or if any. <clears throat> um, and the last question is City on the Edge of Forever by Harlan Ellison. He says, what is the best book you've read this year? Um, best nonfiction book is probably The Age of the Vikings by Anders Winroth. A uh, very good, solid introduction to the Vikings, uh, or at least the Norse. Um, and uh, I, I really did like that. And some great, <clears throat> great moments inside that book. Uh, and fiction, I think I actually still have it next to me. <coughs> I'm digging out a little bit here. So I still, I've made a bunch of videos in a row, and I still have the pile from my monthly wrap-up next to me. Uh... My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. Um, this, I guess, would be the best fiction book so far that I've read this year. Uh, just wonderful prose and a wonderful uh, story that deals with um, ambiguity in a lot of ways. And uh, you're never quite sure exactly what to think of certain characters, including the titular Rachel. So this is probably the best fiction book. I've liked other fiction books, but I'd just say this is probably the top. Um, not by a long shot, but it's the top for me. Um, and that is it. Uh, those are the prompts for, uh, the top 10 Star Trek tag, the original series edition. Um, I'm going to tag Mark over at Book Time with Elvis. Uh, he's usually kind enough to tag me and things, and, um, he is not one of the hosts for Book Trek, so he hasn't been, I guess, unofficially tagged. I don't think Steve officially tagged us, but I think it was, um with the understanding that we would be tagged for this since we were his co-hosts. But I will end up tagging uh, Mark from Book Time with Elvis. So if he likes to do this, he's more than welcome to. So thanks to Steve for creating it. And I hope you can join us for Book Trek. Um, you know, if you do like Star Trek and you've never read a Star Trek fiction book, give it a shot. They're unpretentious. They're just a fun way to kill a bit of time. They're usually less than 300 pages. Um, you know, just give it a shot, and uh, you might be surprised at how much fun you have with it. Um, so, as always, thank you, BookTube.